Hello everyone, this is Gail, and I am, I've only got about three different things I want to do. I really had a hard time deciding what I was going to do for you today. But I got another shipment from uh, RJ Crafts, and this is their cutter set 138, and it's for their flower cutter set. And let me get them out of the bag so you can see all the different it's all one shape, but there's several different sizes. Let's see, this looks like the biggest one. And I got these, which, you know, it's not really a spring time to use flower cutters, but I got to thinking that these would make beautiful poinsettias. So what I'm going to do is make a poinsettia pin or pendant, whatever you want to do with it. And I have got this red glitter Fimo Soft that has been in my drawer for goodness, I don't know how long. And I'm going to get this out and condition it, but I wanted you to see it first. And it's red glitter. I don't know if you can see the glitter through the through the paper yet. But it's a real pretty sparkly clay. And I'm going to um, put it on this round form. This is one of four forms that comes in a set that I got from Donna Cato. Because I don't want it to be flat. I want it to have a little bit of curve to it. Even though I may bake the bottom one flat and then add curves to the others. But we'll see. But I'm going to go ahead and condition this clay and then I'll be back. Alright, I'm back. I want to show you the glitter in this clay. Again, I don't know if you can see it. If I can get the light just right. But believe me, this is sparkly clay. Very sparkly. Then I had this brain uh, burst that got, got me to thinking that maybe I needed to get out my gold glitter clay to make the little gold balls that go in the middle. And then I thought, wait a minute, I've got a little bit of green glitter clay. Why don't I roll that out and I can use that for the bottom layer so the poinsettia will have some leaves. So that's where I'm going with this. I punched out some little circles with my little tiny round Kemper cutter. And if you don't have one, they're awesome, especially if you want to have all of your little pieces the same size. But uh, I do believe they're on my Amazon site. I'll try to remember to put a link at the end of the video. Put it away. But Kemper cutters are the bomb. So what I'm going to do, let me move the gold. You can see the glitter in the gold, I think. Maybe not. Isn't it awful how you can't see? So there you go. There's a little bit. You can see the glitter. That's the way the red is also. But I'm going to put that aside. And I'm going to take the largest flower cutter. See, this is the flower cutter. And it's about two and a half inches wide and just find a place on here and let me get my acrylic block out to press down now I don't normally have this on a sheet of plastic but I've since I want to move it to this I decided to do that so while the cutter is down, I'm going to pull the excess clay away. And then I'm just going to gently use my finger to go in here and release the leaves to my poinsettia. So I've, that's the big one. And what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to take a little tool and you can do this afterwards if you want but you'll see there's a little bit of residue around the edges of the uh, leaves and I'm just going to take a little tool and rub over it and then I'll sand it when it comes out of the oven got a little piece up underneath there there but um, I'm not going to bore you with that but that's what I would do but this time I think I'll go ahead and bake it but I'm also going to take this tool and I'm just going to make a little crease down the center to make it look like a vein and a leaf and if you want you can put some little side creases most of it's not going to be visible because your poinsettia is going to be over top of it but any part that is visible it helps if it looks a little bit realistic even though I I'm not a realistic type kind of crafter you know that but I think I'm going to curve this too just like I I'm going to curve the uh, flowers. You might notice I didn't bother doing the center because the center is going to be... Let me show you what I'm doing. The center is where the other pieces are going to go, but I don't want it... I don't want it to go down. Let me see if I can pull this back up. It's not real sticky. One of the benefits of using old clay I'm going to put that down and hope that the veins stay in it. Because I want this to curve. Oh, you know what I can do? Duh! Instead of putting it on the outside, why don't I put it on the inside? And then I'll put the others on the inside too. So there's my leaves. Then I'm going to take the next two sizes. I'm going to take this size. And this size. I may use, I might cut all of them and just see which ones. And I should have left the cutters in there, but that's all right. I don't know which ones of these I'm going to use, so I'll just cut all of them. I don't think I'll use the little one. But I just, you know, I'm thinking as I craft. I don't know if you do that or not. As I go along, I keep changing my mind and changing the design. But I'm thinking I'm going to cut this size out if I got, if I have enough. Cut two of these. and two out of green and two out of red. Hope I have enough clay here to do this. And maybe make some earrings. They might be a little big, but you know, Christmas is all about bling and sparkle and big earrings. So I may have to get another little bowl out. I don't think I'm going to have room for all of these shapes. I'm 
not going to worry with those again. Not worry about it. But I'm going to also cut one of these. Let me see, I've got green clay on them now. But those are the next to the smallest, which is that one. So now I'm going to take the little one, which I probably will not use on my poinsettia, but I will use it as earrings. Got to get a smaller ball tool to get this one out. Let me use this curvy tool. If you hear a hum, I have a heater going on. It was 63 degrees when I came in here. Now it's up to 69. But I figured working with Fimo clay Oh, I'm going to cut another one, aren't I? Working with Fimo, which is a firm clay anyway, and then any clay that you get that's got glitter in it is going to be stiffer because of the glitter. The glitter makes it a little bit stiffer. So I'm going to set these aside to make earrings out of. And I may, may not do that on camera just for the sake of time. So now I've got let's see if this clay will pull away. I don't want to tear it. Should have left the cutter on here. Just, you know, when the brain gets to going. Let me see if I can put... Is this the one? Yeah, I'll just set that over there and then pull the clay off. I just don't want to rip the flower petals. have one more which is the size bigger than this is that it yep that's it but I think Rhonda does an amazing job with these cutters she has got so many awesome ideas and something for everybody you know she's got holiday type um, cutters for Halloween and Christmas that are so simple to use and simple to make. I'm going to have to clean all of those. But again, I'm not going to worry about the outsides. I'm going to fix those after they bake. I just don't want to mess with these. But again, I'm going to put little lines down the center of each one of these. Because you know a poinsettia, actually, the flat, the what we call the flower is the red leaves, but they're not the flower. They are the leaves. The flower is the little yellow pieces that go in the center. So you can mark this just like you would a leaf. It doesn't take long. You can use anything. You can use a toothpick. Just put a few little lines in it just so it looks like a leaf. And 
And then I'm going to use my little kidney. It's probably called something else. I think it's called a potter's rib. But when it was introduced to me, they called it a kidney. So that's kind of what I have in my mind. And same thing with this one. Just I'll go ahead and fast forward so you don't have to watch me do this to every one. Okay, I have finished putting everything in my pin, pin and my earrings. And you notice I cut a little circle out of the gold. I didn't cut tiny circles, I cut a, a little bit larger circle. And I'm going to take a ball pin, a ball tool, not a ball pin. Let's see what size do I want. Let me put this on the paper so I can get it up after I finish with it. And I'm just going to, and I know you can't see, but what I'm going to do is just take my ball tool and put little divots in this to give it the appearance that it's a bunch of little, little balls, even though it's not. So I'm just going to set that in the bottom here. And I'm going to bake this. I'm, oh, I didn't look. I, I haven't used Fimo in so long, but I believe they're also at 275. 265. So I will bake these at 265 for an hour. And I'll be back after they're baked and we'll put this together. Thanks. Okay, my pieces are baked. I see they have just a little bit of a curve to them. These are the pieces for the pin. I don't know if I'm going to use the little one or not. And then these are the ones for the earrings. And I'm just going to leave those there because I'm not going to do the earrings as part of this project. I'll do that later. But we've now got some little sharp edges and some little flaky pieces here on the edges so what I'm going to do is take an emery board and just kind of go over the edges of these to get rid of those little areas where the uh, cutter left residue and it, you can see it doesn't take a lot of sanding. It's just a little bit on the edges. You just want it to be smooth. You don't want it to have any raggedy edges. just look at it you know you can see little places that might need a little bit of extra sanding but I'm gonna fast forward through this so that you don't have to watch me do a lot of sanding and I will be back
Okay, I uh, had someone at my come to my door, so rather than continue sanding and watching you watch, you know, having you watch that, I just turned the camera off because I don't think you really need to see that. And so right now, at this point, I am going to coat these with UV resin. But I wanted to show you uh, what I did. I used my emery board. There were some places that had a little bit more clay on them that, than the emery board could do. So I got out my little, one of my little sanding pads. And then I got into some of the crevices with a piece of sandpaper that I just folded in half. Just so you can see what I used to sand. So what I'm going to do is, let me find my little foil thing. I like to put my smaller pieces that I put in under the UV light on foil so that the, it'll reflect up and get the underside as it does the rest. But um, I'm going to take, I'm going to use the Tiny Pandora Deep Shine Brush On UV Finish. She really doesn't like to call it a resin because it's more of a finish than it is a resin. Um, it is a resin, but it's not a doming resin. So if you want any texture to this, please use something else. And I'm just, but I'm just going to use a little brush. And I'm not going to worry about the back, but I am going to try to get over the edges. But this is not the brush that comes with the Deep Shine. I have that, and it's, it's, a, lar it's a nice, wonderful brush. But some, sometimes it's too big, too large for some of the projects that I do. So I bought the other set of brushes that Teresa... Salgado cells on Tiny Pandora and they're just perfect. So if you want a really nice set of um, brushes check those out because they're really nice. And I don't remember if I told you the settings that I used on my pasta machine, but these are rolled out to a number four setting on the pasta machine. And I don't know if you can see the difference or not, but once you put the UV on there, you can really see the glitter. It's so pretty and sparkly. I love it. And since I hadn't decided what to do as far as the little yellow balls were concerned, I hadn't baked them. So I, I now know what I'm going to do. So they're in the oven now baking. So I won't be able to completely finish this until they finish baking. But they should be done by the time I finish with the resin. trying to not brush it off on the edges where I've got my fingers. Maybe on the points it won't be so bad. And I'm going to use all of my little poinsettias. I used to say poinsettia and I, it was pointed out to me that there's an eye in there. So now I've really struggled learning to say poinsettia. Of course, now it comes just normal. It's just normal for me. But I know a lot of people still call them poinsettias, and that's fine. It's, it's going to be Christmas soon. Who needs to be grammatically correct? But I'm just brushing a very thin coat on here. Some of my shavings on that one.
and it doesn't take much of this resin or this deep shine finish to give it a really nice shine. You see how quickly it goes. It doesn't take long at all to put this on here. So there, that's done. So I'm going to put this under the UV light just for about five minutes, and then I'll be back. I almost forgot to show you an important step. I take a cigarette lighter. Because sometimes there's tiny little bubbles that you don't see. And I just run a cigarette lighter over this very quickly. But it will bring any little bubbles out. It'll pop them all. So that should do it. So I will be back. Okay, everything is out from the oven. My little yellow poinsettia flowers are all baked now. And let me see, I'm going to use Weld Bond to bond these together because I, Weld Bond is my favorite glue because it's so strong. And I'm just going to put some out on a card. And I always wipe this end off because it's got this little piece that comes up. But it pushes the glue out of it so that way it doesn't ever get clogged up. And I'll take a toothpick. And I'm going to, let's line these up in the way that they go. So I'm going to take some glue it doesn't take a lot of the weld bond but this is the biggest one so I want to make sure this one gets stuck pretty good and I'm going to offset these a little bit and give it a good press so that it goes you know gets stuck together. Get them lined up where you want them. And then, let me see, maybe I'll use my little scoop here. Where's my little scoop? It's on the other end of one of these. There it is. I'm gonna use my little scoop. And I'm going to offset this one from the other one. And then I'll put some more weld bond here. Now, because I put these on the same um, bowl, they're all curved the same, so that makes it really nice. Now, just offset these as you come up. Isn't that pretty? And you want to make sure that this dries. And it's going to take a little while to dry, so what I'm going to do is put a clamp on it. And uh, see, where did I put my clamp? I've got a little, it's really like a paper clip, but it's a little bit bigger. But I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off. I'm going to clamp this and let it sit for a while so that it can get good and hard. 
and dry well and then I'll be back. Alright, I went ahead and glued the little yellow pieces in the center. And you can see, I just put a glob of glue and put these in there. And the glue has tried, dried clear, which is another thing I like about the Weld Bond. And I'm not sure whether I'm going to put this as a pendant or as a pin. So I'm not going to finish it right now. But I just wanted you to see how you can use the RJ Crafts flower cutters to make a beautiful poinsettia. So I hope you like this and I will be back soon with another polymer clay tutorial. Thank you. Bye.